Hello to everyone out there. Uh, my name's Stuart Rosler. I'll be presenting for LBG Medical Limited. Um, just a few things on their bio range of customised uh, orthoses, sorry, prefab orthoses. <clears throat> and um, there's uh, just some suggestions on how to modify them while you're out in the clinics. Um, so this is me, essentially. I'm a consultant there with these guys. Um, and my background, I, I'm an Australian, so uh, my background, I've, I've got a degree in business and one in, in podiatry. And I'm currently uh, reading for a, a, a Master of Science in Orthopaedic Engineering, in engineering out of Sweden. Um, I'm an Australian, Australian trained and registered practitioner. Uh, working in the private sector um, in the UK, Australia and everywhere else. Uh, I've also had a lot of experience with the Australian Sports Commission, worked with them for about 10 years. I still do odd jobs for different uh, athlete programs and my specialty there was in all the Olympic programs through there. I now find myself as a, a business consultant for productivity for, for big engineering firms uh, and industrial utility companies. Um, been doing this for 20 years or so in custom orthoses and, and um, other sports equipment. So that's my background. Um, and hopefully I'll meet a few of you sometime soon, uh, anywhere out there. So just a little bit about what we're doing today. Another technical glitch, there we go. Um, we're gonna go through and review the <clears throat> Excuse me, a bit of a throg in my throat. We're going to go through and review the uh, the bio range of prefabricated orthoses. Uh, there's four different types, but we're mostly going to be focusing on the advanced. Um, I'm also going to just wash over the uh, the new dorsal components that uh, LBG have got, and then they're coming out, and you'll be able to fit to the uh, to the uh, uh, orthoses. We'll call them orthoses, but what I mean is the prefabs. And then the main thing, the main thrust of what I'm looking at today is how to perform some in-clinic modifications should you want to do it. And then a bit of a few question times if anyone's got any questions out there. Okay. So again, I find it a bit, a bit funny. I'm an Australian, obviously, if you can tell. Um, not New Zealand, but close. Uh, I'm actually located in Sweden. Um, I'm working for a UK company talking to an audience of orthotists, I, I assume mostly, um, different medical professionals, but you know, orthotists mainly, a little bit different from podiatrists, um, in the US. And I just find that, that all of that situation seems a bit kind of funny how, how the world goes in this, uh, how, how small the world is. But more than happy to interact with any of you online or, or on any of the social media type platforms that we use. Uh, and one of the things that I do realise as, as an Australian living in England, we can tend to talk fast. So I will promise to try and talk as slow as I can. Uh, it's mostly just finishing my words, rounding it off. Okay, so if you do have any questions, please get on and ask while we're live. Um, having a look at where the conference is, um, I wanted to have a bit of a look at Tucson. Now I would say it. So it's just a bit, a bit of fun. Um, I don't know if you all know that Tucson comes from the uh, native Indian American word of um, Suksan, I guess, which means to look at the foot of the Black Mountain. So Tucson at the foot of the Black Mountain, mm, there's something related to feet. It also gets more sun than any other city in the US. Very interesting. Maybe a good place to hold it if you're looking for sun. Um, there's more cactus surrounding it than uh, the, the city of Tucson than any other place in the world. And uh, there's not been able to find the end of the, the colossal cave, which is just out of the city. Um, very interesting. Uh, if there's anyone there that's looking at this webinar that wants to have a visit, I, I highly recommend it. It's like a fun place to go. Anyway, back to task. The prefabricated orthoses range. Um, so, probably four main flagship ones. There's the Advance, the, the Mex, and Skive and Soft. And like I said, the ones that are available on the Hangar uh, site are the Advance mostly, but we'll talk about them primarily today. 
but there they are they are the others coming through on the s pen all of that but there's details within this um this lecture series about where to get them so just ask your your hangout uh, rep or hangout head office and they'll be able to direct you where those things are um okay so the prefabricated orthoses so just having a look a bit more generally up the chain at this one um what is a prefabricated orthosis and what is it for all right they, they get a lot of hard um they get a lot of hard well i guess what's the word i'm looking for um uh, hard press i guess um everyone seems to think well we you know if you're going to go prefab you might as well go customized or not at all um, but I find that they're really good in between at, at helping your clinical process and your clinical thinking go forward. Um, so in general, what we're looking for a prefabricator to do is, is the same or a little bit diff different um, to what you might want a customised device to do, maybe in a softer, subtle way, um, but also to lead our thinking into what we think is going on with the patient and the profile that we see in front of us. So. The, the uh, in general prefabricated orthoses um this range we tend to find that they're quite good at the uh, assisting in the biomechanical control just because of the way that they're being put together okay so primarily they can assist the uh improvement of the foot position right so looking at where the foot is in space and where we want to put it and how that relates to our pathology that's our job but these tend to be pretty good at, at just positioning in a, a logical space of where we want to work with and later on in in the the, the, the webinar we'll have um some ideas on where to reposition that foot uh, foot as it loads um should we want to like i said that's the main thing um again an orthosis should assist the control of abnormal motion okay so think about position think about motion that you're trying to control two different things uh, motion is something that we're trying to promote particularly in the active client um, but also in the inactive or the pathological client it's typically the motion that um, is causing the problem okay um, and and finally we're trying to assist in stabilizing the movement of the subtalar joint more much more specific um, but i focus on the subtalar joint primarily because of uh, the, the thinking that I go through when I'm making adjustments to prefabs. Right. The beauty of a prefab is it's adap uh, adaptable and it's adaptable at the point uh, in front of the patient. Okay, so chair side additions we call them, or I call them, and you can promote that early treatment, which technically can be you know two to four weeks before you can get a customized solution in their, their footwear. Um, we can promote that treatment early and, and get results quicker which is always better for uh, what us and our patients want and you know, very good branding for our businesses. Okay, and again, reinforcing that, they're quick, simple to use, um, not, a, not a bad thing at all. Um, right, correct um, time that we, we talked about. So the time and particularly with uh, the health budgets that are going in the public sector, um, that's quite key. So not necessarily bad they're just a different option for a, a, a different focus on treatment and again adaptable um, you can try and test out before you're casting and they generally uh, retail at between 10 to 12 us dollars a pair okay as a standard price that varies between the type of device you get um, but hopefully it's it's quite a good point to get your patient engaged with what you're trying to do in any any format and again, we go back to that movement, stability, and what we're thinking clinically on, on changes that we uh, want to see and are able to see, okay, and achievable. Okay, and then more spe specifically, what about the bio? Okay, bio prefabricated orthoses. Why are these different from many of the other ones out there? Okay, uh, in, in my view, I, I think they're quite price competitive for what they are. Um, very good price point. You can um, charge a, a reasonable rate to your, your clients uh, to get an engagement with the process, but also it's not going to cost you too much to to invest in these going forwards. Um, and really, it's all about uh, 
positive health solution. Um, so, but we've all got to be able to open the doors the next day. Uh, there's no hidden costs in there, right? Um, additional planner components are included in most all the packs. And they're little bags of uh, goodies, which, which essentially contain uh, bits and pieces of rear foot wedging, some forefoot wedging, stuff like that. You'll see them in the packs when they come. I find these tremendously handy to have. Uh, I section them off in little buckets in my clinic and I can pull them out and put them into different types of things that I want because I know the, uh, the, the material densities and, and what they're doing each time. So quite handy. They do tend to, to kind of grow. Um, again, saving you a bit of time and effort to get them separately. Um, the shape in, in the curvature and the way that they've been designed, and we'll, we'll uh, talk about it here, I've, I've got um, the Sustanachium talli, and this is particularly in the sky range, but most, most of them have this transverse arch plane um, that will, will tend to support up underneath the Sustanachium talli. Okay, uh, and that's quite unique to the bio range. Um, that also can really help reduce movement and or promote, sorry, re reduce or change position but promote movement in a very controlled way um, with this position here and we can modify that. So that's a bit of the focus on when we're looking at uh, readjusting the, the prefab to do that. And as I said, it's, it's just the thinking behind it, I think, and then that, that reflects in the shape. Uh, the EVA that's in, in there is um, over time it's been tested and EVA is one of these things you, you, you kind of depends where you source it from it, it tends to promote what it does longer term. Uh, if any of you seen the material science stuff that I've talked about um, you can get on the LBG website and we've, we've discussed EVA quite uh, a lot. Uh, a big big subject but um, the I find the EVA in the bio range tends to be uh, quite good and, and there's less tendency for it to bottom out. Okay, it's just a, a better blown in. And then there's also variety in the range. So we uh, we include in the bio range the polyprope devices, which is the one referred to as the Biomex. And that's uh, another one, this is that one here somewhere. Okay, polypropylene press, that's the, the top cover. The polypropylene press device, um, sorry, polypropylene um, mass produce device, uh, yeah, and, and that's quite a good good option out there with the same shape as we do. All right, so throughout this uh, discussion, I want to um, get people to consider the the control point of the orthosis. Okay, this is one of the many things that you do as a clinician. But when you're thinking about what's going on in the patient and, and how do we um, think about changing the pattern, whether it be from uh, the movement, the position, or, or anything that we're trying to remote, um, offloading, okay, direct plantar floor force, anything like that, consider the position that the subtalar axis is in. Okay, thanks to Kevin Kirby, he's done lots of work in, in this area. Um, that's where some of these pictures are from. So on the left, the far left, you'll see that, that that's immediately deviated subtalar joint axis. Okay, and if we look at it, everything to the medial side of that axis is, if we put anything there, so if we push anything up underneath the foot, anything there is uh, what's called a supernat supernationary moment. Okay, so anything on that side of the axis will promote supernation, okay? And supernationary moments, of course, resist pronation. Okay, so if you've got that heavy pronated foot and the subtalar joint is uh, medially deviated quite a lot, okay, you can see the little area in here is not that big. Okay, this, this little green section in here is the only area that we've got to deal with resisting that pronation. Okay, and more often than not, we'll, we'll talk about this later, but if we put a, a, a big supernate or a big pad or a big um, uh, uh, support through the foot it typically goes over that axis without us knowing and then we we inadvertently create a pronation okay moment which aids pronation 
So in this in this situation, we're trying to okay resist the pronation with a supination moment, and without knowing it, we're actually promoting pronation on top of it if we go past this line. Okay, and this is the essence of what Kevin talked about in his um, in his uh, stuff on the on the skies. Okay, and the skies should sit, or depending on the axis of the subtalar joint, on the medial side of the uh, of the axis. Right, just to promote this and think about it. Some good work done there many years ago, and, and continues to, to develop it. Um, really quite sharp at what he does. Okay, so you can see that's the, the left hand side is the uh, what we would typically look at as a medially deviated subtalar joint axis, and that's typical in that rear foot pronated foot. Okay, um, what is you know the, the middle? What we may typically see in the middle of the bell curve. Okay, what we would ideally look as ideal movement. Um, but it's not necessarily present in all of them. But theoretically, this is where we're trying to get to. In the middle one is that that fairly even equilibrium point of, um, you know, supination moment and pronation moment. And again, if you've got a foot that's operating well and you might need to tweak it back and forth, you can see that in, on the medial side of this one here, you've got plenty of room to do those medial padding and medial stuff like that. And then the one on the far right is the, uh, the laterally deviated. Okay, so that's that high cavus foot that we're talking about. Right. So everything that we're talking about here in, in the prefab range that we're discussing, and then the modifications on it, I'm going to wash that around and over with this control point theory. Right. Where are we going to put the, the, the pad or the adjustments to the orthotic depending on the axis of the, uh, the subtalar joint? Okay, so when I had a look at the shape of the, uh, the, the um, bio range, I picked out two different um, devices and are of interest. We I, I saw um, the, the bio advance and the bio skies. Again, so we've got the bio, there it is. Okay, there's the advance and this is a, um, Density. I'm not sure what density is. Okay, but um, the main thing that we're talking about here is you've got a, um, a longitudinal art, medial arch. Okay, and let's say it's traditionally shaped like this orange line here. All right, and that's the parabola that we look at. When we look at the sky, it's slightly lower, but at the same control point. Um, so lower is not the right word. It's at the same height when we look at the the, the support. Uh, height, but it drops away just a bit quicker. Okay, so it's a little bit more of an aggressive curve that comes down and flattens off. So when you look at it from the, um, the in the subject, uh, sorry, the frontal plane, um, you you can start to see that the the, the device uh, tends to uh, reduce a lot quicker than what the other others in the bio and advanced and, and the, the next and all those do. Okay, um, the other quite interesting feature of it is the bias guy tends to drop down a little bit more when we're looking at in the frontal plane. Oh, sorry. Yes, the frontal plane. All right. So that one's in the sagittal plane. This one's in the frontal plane. All right. And it tends to have a higher, uh, sorry, again, the same control point, but it drops away a bit quicker all right. now, with the sky at the back. Now, the reason that that's done um, is because we're trying to recognize that with the foot that needs the more control at the back, okay, so typically this foot here, this, this um, medially deviated subtalar joint, okay, the, the, the type of device that we want, we'll see a lower uh, profile of the foot typically in that um, device. So that's quite, uh, quite unique for this range and, and quite well thought out. Um, so, the scythe obviously has the scythe, the medial um, scythe at the back to try and promote rear foot uh, support a bit more, but it also acknowledges that those feet typically are a different profile to what you would normally see. And this brings a, a, a large amount of comfort back into the patient and what's going on. So they're not just the same shape with the scythe on it, they've thought about the whole thing and brought it across. Okay, now there's a lot. Um, a lot of a lot of uh, information that's uh, across the four ranges that I looked at, 
Um, and I think for, for everyone concerned, it's probably easier that you have a look at each. And here's a bit of a summary of what we've found uh, across the range, okay? So uh, you can see the features and then the quasi benefits of what they are, things to consider, and then um, what patients they may be good for. All right, this is a good little summary to have near your, your prescription or the, 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 when you're deciding to make um, your devices. Um, these are a good idea to guide you in the right way, even training staff. And then uh, just on the, on the bottom panel here, you can see that they're available. Um, the BioAdvanced are available in the hangar store, but the, the other three are still to come, but you can get on the SPS and or SureFit portion of the, uh, of the site. You can get them out of there. Okay, so I won't spend too much more time on on the the skive or the um, components, just because the, they can take up a lot of time. I want to try and keep you all awake for the rest of the day. Uh, right, so now we're going through the dorsal components. Okay, these are newish ones into um, uh, uh, the the bio range. Now, just refreshing that the, the planter components, okay, they come in the box. Right? You've got them, they come with, with all the bio range. Um, typically, you have a, a two degree, two to six degree medium density EVA rear foot post, okay? And they can be used, obviously, with different ranges depending on the different patients. Um, the, the, there's a four foot padding that you can do, I'll one here. Okay, so the padding in here, now the idea of that is you can leave it on there, okay, and that maintains a neutral or, or a, a, a typical forefoot. You can take it off, right, in different ways. You can take both off. So then you've created a little dell in the device, okay. That can help with that cavus foot or trying to offload. Alternatively, you can leave them on, okay, leave the pads on, and then there's another two in there that you can typically put on, okay, and you just add to the mix. So this one's already got one on there. In the pack, we've got another one. That's, we can quasi put two on, and then you've created a bit of a four foot post on there, okay? Um, so they're typically what you can do, or you can use any others. So that's in there. Same again with the, the heel, okay? You've got a little dell there, you can add to it if you want, or take it away. So that you create that quasi heel pain feature. Um, very good at those. The other one there that most people work out in time is you've got your four foot posts. Okay, so you've got a um, four degree four foot post that you can put on there. Now, depending on your clinic, you might have access to a grinder. I find that quite good at, at grinding and changing different things. Okay, so that's just something that you can do without the grinders in place. Right. But again, if you look in the box, you'll become very familiar with what they are. As I said, I, I get um, six boxes and I throw all the different stuff so I know I pick them out for what they are. But beware that the, the sizes then change. Right? You'll get some for extra large and you are large, maybe so you end up with 12 and there's your boxes. Um, okay, so again, you, you add it to create a, a, a quasi block and then you take it away to create a dill. Yeah, not the singer. Okay, and we talked about the heel pain feature as well. Uh, heel raise, simple as, you can stick the heel raise, okay, on here, I think it's a two mil, five mil heel raise, and again, all part of what they, they come as a pack. You can stick two, I typically, kind of, depending on that, that patient with the, if it's Achilles um, uh, problems, I can stick it on early, depending on the movement in the shoe. As I said, great presence for what you want, without having to go hunting down and looking for stuff that's right in the box, right? Um, and again, all of this is part of your in-chair adaption process. So we're trying to save essentially clinic time and process to get you on with getting your patient better and out the door quicker. So now the dorsal components. Now they're not part of the packs. Okay, these are a separate line that are coming in. Um, now, essentially, you've got a met bar, a met pad, and a heel pain aperture. And they, uh, they cling to the top of the device, and, and essentially, um, you're able to position and reposition live with the patient in the room, right? 
we all know what it's like to to try and get a, a, a met pad or a met bar position right for a patient it chews up time and, and patients come back a lot because it's not in the right position um, the idea here is that you can put it on let the patient move it around and then review back when they found it in a comfortable position and hopefully a little bit of treatment has occurred in there so that's what the dorsal components are for and again they're not part of the device pack we're looking for them separately okay so now the main thing that we're going to have a look at here is, is some, uh, some in-clinic modifications. Right? Um, look, there's a million modifications that you can do depending on a million patients that you see. Uh, the main ones that we're going to pick on today is, is that highly deviated subtalar joint axis. So the pronated axis of the, the subtalar joint that I've talked about before. So the, the low supinated resistance, that caver's foot, and then pad positioning. Right, they're just a, a grab of three possible things that you could do, um, but I think are quite you'll find quite handy, and, and you know may do eighty percent of what you you need to do. Right, so I always have a little bit of a toolkit, and I've got one here today, which is just spread out all over the desk. But uh, I, when I'm travelling around to sports clubs, anything like that, and in the clinic, I've got this little area. It's got drawers in it. Everything's got a, a place and a purpose, so I can quickly go to it and, and make modifications. But the essence of what that is is a, is a decent pair of scissors, okay, material scissors with a serrated edge, so they stay sharp for longer. Okay, decent pair of them. Uh, we go to some clinics and we're trying to do those with the you know, ones that are disposable in there. It's just it just takes longer. So a small investment in a, in a good tool uh, tends to help. Uh, over here, it's called uh, wool felt, which is just a wool composite felt. You can get it in various different thicknesses. Okay, but that's got very good com compression and hypoallergenic properties. You can use those for different patterns that you, you want. Okay, so the wool felt. There's another one called fleecy web, or fleece web. Okay, that's a microfiber, a lot thinner, comes in about 1.5 thickness. Um, and it's really quite, it's quite good because it's versatile and thin. Uh, again, low allergenic, so for all of those. Um, I go hunting for these all the time, so you can get some wedge strips. All right, so this one's a six mil wedge strip. Um, very handy, very handy to have. I, I buy them all the time, um, and they can help promote um, a lot of the shapes that you want to create. If you've got grinders, even better. Um, so that's just a medium density EVA. Uh, skin markers, okay, good old pens and pencils, but I tend to find that if you can get ones that are designed well for marking on the skin, you can mark on the foot what you want to do and then create it later on. That's also quite handy for the lab if you're taking scans or pictures for the lab. You can put the axes and everything on that you're doing on the foot and that communicates a lot of the things. And of course the met pads, met bars, okay, met pads, medial okay medial supports not sure what they call them over there in the us um i haven't heard anything differently they're called a valgus pad here in the uk um and that's another discussion but you've got your net bars net pads all those others and a bit of bit of sports tape I always find a bit of sports tape can help you control your thoughts and processes you might want to put your foot into a position for a certain while but it also helps to tape things down and test and do things while you're in there. So uh, again, sports tape, not essential, but it, it's handy. Okay, so now back to, so we're in the modifications zone. We're, we're thinking about a patient's in front of us and we've got that typically um, pronated foot, really flat. Uh, the one that we would technically call is immediately deviated subtalar joints axis. Okay, so you go through all your typical tests for how you would test that and what you would think. Where's the pronation coming from? Okay, and if we look at it at the subtalar joint axis in this case, uh, the type of device that we're looking to adjust, and I'd probably say in the range that we've got, it might be the sky, uh, depending on the size and weight of the person and the tolerance to um, modifications, um, you might be looking at a higher density uh, EVA. Okay, so test your um, subtalar joint axis. I find it really handy to visualize. Okay, being a visual person myself, if I can look and see which axis the, the subtalar joint is, okay, 
we can visualize that, give us an idea of where we're going to put the modifications that we want on the dorsal surface, particularly, but also on the planar surface of the device. Okay. Um, and again, going back to the materials that you're going to think about on the either side of the device. That's why I'm trying to visualize where it is. If you get an idea on the, on the if you draw it on the bottom of the foot, you'll see some of my clinical scans that have got a line up and down the foot. That's me trying to visualize where I want to play and where I don't want to play. And I'm talking about support or movement in a certain area. Okay. Um, and again, if I'm talking about a supernatal foot, it'll be on the lateral side. Right? But definitely on this medially deviated axis, this heavy pronated foot, most of the action is going to go on in the medial, medial to the size of that axis. Right? So we're creating a supernationary force to resist the pronation. That can be sometimes quite tricky for people to get into their hands. Right? And again, what I've been talking about, pronation, supernation. Again, Kevin Kirby, I, I recommend going to his, uh, his Facebook. He does a lot on social media and those, but Kevin's got a really good explanation of uh, all of this, but also has this uh, 3D subtalar joint axis position. Okay, you can go through a certain sequence and, and like the picture here shows from Kevin's uh, website, um, go and have a look and visualize where you see the axis. It's, it's in a triplanar position and it can give you a real visual concept of what you're trying to deal with and also for the patient. Okay, and you can start to see the things that you're doing to have an effect with a prefab or with, even with a customized device. Okay. Okay, so again, we're going back to the, ah, here we are here. So now imagine we're making an, an adjustment to a device and we go over that axis, okay? This is this little section here. So if we're creating a pad, and say I put a pad on just like this one here for this device, this is a skive, okay? And I put on a, just a medial support pad, and the device is as, as an axis like this, everything to this to this side of the axis is going to be pushing the foot into pronation. Okay, it's going to be doing that, which is not really what we want for a foot. So technically what I should have is some kind of little all right, a lot of support through the rear foot. So it doesn't interact past that subtalar joint axis, okay? And the reason I'm talking about this is the concept of a, of a seesaw, right? Imagine you're a kid on a seesaw and, and the, the fulcrum's up one end. So the heavy kid has to be up here and, and the not so heavy kid, the younger kid can be down that end, right? But depending on the distance from the fulcrum, we're dealing with forces. Everything to this side will push the seesaw that way, okay? Because that's where the fulcrum. Everything to the other side will push it the other way. Okay, and what we're trying to achieve in most all therapy is a balance. Okay, now can now consider that in this situation. Okay, what's happened here is we've changed the position of the fulcrum, right, by padding that we've put on. Okay, so you change the position so the fulcrum's still there, but the padding's there. What's going to happen when the kid's like this? He's still he's up here further. The seesaw isn't going to work. It's going to want to change the fulcrum. Okay or it's going to want to go up. And the concept there is there's, there's too much force on this inside of the fulcrum. The resulting motion is that the, the seesaw doesn't seesaw as much. You're not resisting that pronation. More often than not, the foot just sits higher into the shoe. Okay. And the typical comment for this is, well, it feels as if my foot's not fitting in the shoe or it's lifting out of the shoe. Okay. Because what you've done is moved past that point of no return, and you're essentially just jamming the foot upwards. Okay, balance of forces there. So that's quite a key thing to consider when you're not getting the results that you want. It may be that you, you know, you're looking at the foot and you're like, oh, I'm still getting this pronation, but you, you, the tendency is to pile more medial padding or medial support onto it. But if it's the wrong side of that subtalar joint axis, it's not going to do anyone as any favours. And that's typically when you hear the patient um, say, oh, it's, you know, the devices are really lumpy, they're really sore, I can feel this lump in my foot. That's exactly where this little uh, area is in here. So from that, 
that's where the sky is a good good option because it's not only changed in in this profile but it's also changed in this one here to try and support just that proper side of the foot that we want to get okay and that's unique to to the um, prefabricated orthotic world okay i'll just share my screen because what we're going to do here is just there's me get this bigger Don't know where I went. There we go. Whoops. Mm. Show screen. Good camp. There I am again. Okay, let's see if we can. It won't go any bigger than this. Um, but what we're going to do is, is show you what I would do typically for immediately deviated uh, subtalar joint axis. So we've got uh, padding here, okay? So this is just a bit of three mil EVA pad. And what we want is to have the, the, the pad uh, to one side of that axis. So typically what I do is I draw on the patient, okay, down the axis of where my subtalar joint is. And, and artificially I can draw all over this Let's just say here, that's probably not too medially deviated. Right. Just for example sake, okay, let's say that's where the, the axis of the foot that I'm seeing is. Okay, so it's through this area here. And you can see straight away, I've got an area where, well, I know I want support that side, but I don't particularly want it there because of my thinking. Okay, I can test that out. So then we get the, okay, we get this, and we want to get the, the, the high side on the inside of the device, right? So essentially, depending on how much you want to do, you can get more support through that medial side there. Right? I'll get a new pad. I typically do this. Okay. Thick edge on the outside, and then I can, just position that there, get my scissors. Okay, good job. Okay, and what we want to do is then put that on there. More often than not, I don't need to go all the way through the arch. Uh, what we've done here, go all, all the way through the arch. Because then I can cut this around with my fingers. Sorry, my scissors. Not my fingers, peeps. Um, and then get the, the medial side of the device nice and, nice and flat. Okay. Uh, another way you can do that, I'll just take those off. So we can use uh, EVA, like I said, turning it on. You can see that will just provide a bit more support. You can go thicker and thicker and just cut it down. I have a grinder in most of my clinics, um, but if you're not through there, this is absolutely perfect for your clinical thinking. And you can go through and do things like that. Okay. Um, I also typically think about Okay, can I do this with other materials? And of course you can do it with the wool felt. Bit of padding, clip on straight away. It's not pretty, but it does exactly what you want it to do functionally in the foot. And, and the more you start to think about it in this way, the, the, the more response you will get from your clients, which is coming back in the door. Okay. Um, all right, so the next one, take me away. Uh, again, same thinking. This one's a bit, uh, a, a bit the same. So with same, same thought process, but opposite side of the foot. So this is that really cavus foot. And they might have a plantar flex first ray, but they're really loading laterally on the foot and, and everywhere else that it goes. So same process that you go through, same thought process. You then uh, create 
uh, thinking along the way of, right, I want some lateral support, but where do I end the lateral support? You can see in this example, we've, we've got um, plenty of area on the outside lateral part of the foot, but we need to be aware that we uh, consider what's, what's rear foot and forefoot, okay? So typically you can put it on a rear foot device, but um, you know, please consider if you go past the mid tarsal joint that you're going to be enacting the forefoot control, which again, artificially might be locking up the foot. Um, but if you've got plenty of room on the medial side and you've created a dill, um, then you can do it on that one. So back to this device, okay. I'm not sure if we're gonna see this, there we go. Okay, back to this device, let's say that one's not on there anymore. I'd probably get a bit of the wool felt, okay? And really what we're gonna do here is create the same axis. Through there, okay? And again, ah, trick for beginners. I've just done that and cut it the other way, but then I can't stick it on. All right, so if I do it this way, stick your sides down and then need to turn it over and it's the wrong way. All right, so stick your side down. <laughs> Everything goes perfectly all the time, doesn't it? Okay. Cutting that forward, take the sticky off. Actually, you don't need it to find through there. Someone's watching telly. Now, as we go on, we just stick it on. Okay. Again, before this, I would have drawn my subtalar axis where I'm happy with it, where it goes, put the, the padding on, not very graceful again, but again, we've created a lateral process outside of there and I probably wouldn't use a, a, a sky device on this one I'd go something with the advanced okay because you've got that high arch profile and you can control it coming in we'd also take this little section off here because typically the the the, the toe wants to come down and we're trying to promote that movement but again just be aware of how far you go up forwards not only because of the subtalar axis that we're trying to Axis that we're trying to control and know, and you'll know this one's a lot more okay straight. But there's no use putting all the padding up the front because technically we've got what is it, four to five degrees range of motion in, in most mid tarsal joints. So the idea there is you, you don't want to lock it up. Okay, so same idea, um, different different process, literally logical. You can use, as I said, wool felt, fleece web, anything that you want. Uh, and, and go from there. So this next little tip, once I get you, okay, okay that's me demonstrating. One, this next little tip comes from Kevin Kirby. Again, I had the pleasure of working in, with him just this summer in the, um, the biomechanics summer school over here in the UK. Very good, um, very good course, very good thing to be part of. Um, excellent speakers and, and really good advice and quite friendly. Everyone was quite friendly. Anyway, Kevin came up with these little tidbits, which are gold. Um, he loves my shirts as well, we'll say. I'll see if I can send him some for Christmas this year. Might need them up in the mail. Um, right, so when we're looking at a, um, a net pad, right, how many of us have been out there with that, that patience? So they just look up. Oh, it's not in the right spot. It's too far forward, it's too far back, it's up, it's down, it's wherever. What a lab will do is typically, depending on the lab, is they'll put it about five centimetres behind the, the net parabola or a rule of thirds. Uh, it's going to come out one thirds, two thirds. That's back to front just because we're on a, a screen. But essentially what we're, we're doing here is two thirds is behind the metatarsal parabola of the device and one third juts out the front or it's about 10 to 15 mil that comes out forwards. So that's a real um, general measure, okay? Um, 
it's it's not an exact thing uh, for lunch to do. So I know as a clinician, I need to create some kind of uh, exact position, but really my exact position is never the right position for the patient. Right? It just pests at creating the, the right thing. So what we can do here, okay, is get our mat pads. And they typically come, depending on the brands that you get, but they'll typically come with uh, two little sections on the back here. And you can see this one that we've already done. So they'll come off and they, they, they both peel off in sections, right? You can throw one away, okay? And then get another one and plonk it on uh, the area like this. Let's go back here. All right? So what I've done is taken two of them away, thrown one away, and then just plonk this one across there like that. So you've got a bit of sticky and a bit of sticky. Get out of ice, okay? And let's say it's a, a large net pad for a large person, depends on the size foot. You put it where you your best guess is, okay? Where you think the brother is, it'll stay on there. Okay, not a problem. Stick that in the shoe, get the patient to go, get the patient to move it as they want. Um, what I would do is, is get this and with a marker pen, just mark the shape that you put it on initially because that'll give you a reference point. But that's a lovely thing for patients to then go and do um, and get it in that perfect position and give you feedback of what they want. And the game is to see where they put it, okay? I had a clinician come in the other day and they said they put the net pad up the top here, right? It wasn't interacting with the foot and that was the most comfortable position, okay? Patient's always right. Um, so that's a really handy tip and so what you can do then is, is when they come and you're at your first review and you find out where the position is, you get commitment from them to say, this is the best position, this is what I want, okay? You, you mark it where it is, you take the, uh, you take the, the thing off, you've marked it on there, plonk it on, happy days, right? And these are quite sticky. Uh, this is also where I find sports tape because sometimes you can put sports tape on there and give, give it more, okay? And that can last as long as the device and or from what you're thinking about it is a customized solution that the best option and or you can send these things in and get a top cover put on it in a lab i'm sure something in the lab can do that but again it's it's all about trying to, to get the right idea uh again mostly because met pads are quite popular i find this little technique also handy so what i've got is the the police whip right if you're confident with the patient you can stick Okay, one little, oh, this is the, the, the police web again. Again, if you're confident with the patient and, and where they're describing where they want the pad and you've drawn it, you want to make it a bit more permanent, you know, not subtle. You stick that little dot on there, put it in the shoe, is that okay? Yeah, that's fine. Need a bit more, okay. Next size up, it's a bit bigger, okay. So now we plonk this on top and you've created a slight del sorry a slight pimple i guess in the middle of the device so you, you're gradually building it up in a, in a layer of things that are going on and a bigger one again and this is something that i typically get that i you know you can call it the you know the little pancake idea but this is something that i get patients to do i give them a strip of the the, the uh, fleece whip and or wool felt wool felt tends to be a bit thicker but they can then create these little things themselves and create this padding all right and then you watch what comes back all right it's fantastic but the, the main thing i like to get here is is ownership okay if we can get our, our patients to own the process that we're trying to do we're all winning in, in that sense um that's about it for adjustments um for you know positioning for a lot of the different stuff that we're going to talk about again prefabs prefabs this is quite a good range they've thought about it they've, they've done um what we want them to do um very good price point and look at, i find that you you'll have a lot of joy uh when you're presenting them 
uh, to your patients and the solutions that you get from it. Really quite a cheap price. But again, engage with the process. It's not going to be a, a one-stop shop. You're going to have to work, work with them. But um, really what we do and what I've found clinically, is they're a very good solution to, to most all this, the problems that you have, uh, whether it be enough or, or you know, they're trying to fit to a foot to go forwards. Um, whether it's enough for the patient is the discussion for you and the patient and, and then what customised solution you may want to go from there. Okay, but again, it's it's all about engagement. So is there any questions? Uh, I did promise to speak a bit slower and I didn't because I get excited about this kind of stuff. Um, is there any out there? I'm not sure if anyone can interact with this portal, but I'll hang around online afterwards and we can, we can talk uh, Talk Turkey, as it were. Right. Talk about the the place at the foot of the Black Mountains. Excuse the pun. Um, and I'm sure that you can find all of these online, the LBG uh, website and or the Hangar website. Okay. Look, I thank you. Thank you for your time, and I look forward to meeting you all out in the, uh, in the not too distant future. Cheers. <laughs>